exercise 20. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality in SOLIDWORKS to automate and create uh, piece parts that are very commonly used. In this case, imagine you're a desk manufacturer and you have lots of different parts, but the goal is to always create desks, so you have some similar parts as well, like the nuts and bolts and fasteners that would go into those desks. We're going to learn how to set up that catalog so you can just pull and pull in those parts very easily through a design library. We'll also take a look at some of the photo rendering capabilities in this exercise as well. So we begin by first of all setting up the library. Now if you go to the tools area up at the top here and you should be able to find the file locations and instead of document templates click on design library. Now right now the design library is set to a specific area. We don't want to delete that. We actually want to add to it. And basically the design library comes up here on the right hand side of those little library books. So we'll click on add and now if you have your flash drive in with those parts or if you're on the system you can actually just go I'm going to go to my flash drive and I'm going to find my folder for CAD 121 and then sample files and exercise 20 I'm just going to click one time on desk parts, just one time. Don't click on any of the other subfolders. You'll see there's subfolders in there too. There's bolts, casters, desktops, dowels, legs, and ribs. We just want the, the top level desk parts selected. Hit OK. And now it lists it in the folders. At the bottom of this, go ahead and hit OK now. And yes, we'll hit yes. Okay, now from this point, we'll go ahead and start a new assembly. And just hit the little X to cancel out on the begin assembly option. And we'll save our assembly as our desk. Now on the right hand side, if you click on this, you should see the desk parts library books. Hit that. And you'll see below all the different folders. So, for example, um, or if you get a little plus symbol, you'll see them listed there too. Let's click on, for example, we want the desktop. And all you do is you just drag that in. Okay, and at this point, we're going to go ahead and just drop it where it lies. And then hit escape. Now, the very first part is always fixed. If you go to isometric here, we can see that this is laying on its side, really. We want that to be laying upward. So it was just really how it was modeled. It was modeled kind of sideways. So to fix that, we actually want that on the front. We want that uh, front to be on our top, I should say. So hit the little plus symbol to the left here, and also right click on the little F in parentheses and select float. That allows this to move around. I should have a little minus symbol inside, right? That says next to desktop. Let's take the, the front plane of this, click on that, and then go ahead and hold control and select the top plane of the desk assembly. So you're holding control and select the front of the desktop and the top plane of the desk. Go to mate, and it flipped it the wrong way. So we'll have to go here to Align, flip it right side up. Now we're going to hit this little plus symbol up here next to the desk, and now we'll align the right planes together. And finally, we'll align the front plane of the desk assembly to the top plane of the desk. And that centers us now. Okay, you should be able to see that there's some holes in here. Actually, if I change some of the colors, it might come through a little bit easier. So if I click here, I could go to the beach ball 
and cancel out, remove the rubber color there. We'll keep the desktop the same color. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier to see those holes. Now what we're going to do, we'll flip it over, and there are some uh, components that are going to go in there. If we look at our drawing, we can see from this image here, we have in the center those two, we have little screws that go in, and then we have dowel pins that go in as well on the outer side. So what we can do for this is go to the library and go to the bolts and the fastening bolt is what we're looking for. Let's zoom up here. We should be able to drag this over. Now notice it just kind of flops around. It doesn't really do anything. So let's just drop one right there. Actually, let's uh, just hit undo actually. Let's get rid of it. Let's make a change to that. If you cl double click on the fastening bolt, it will open up by itself in its own part file. And what we can do is establish some pre relationships so it locks into place automatically. So, to do that, we could go up here to uh, Tools. Actually, not Tools, go to Insert, Reference Geometry, and Mate Reference. Now you can see you could add primary, secondary, and tertiary. We're just going to add a primary mate here for the concentric face. So we could select this face here and hit apply. Now we could go ahead and add additional mates, but then it, it complicates things a little bit more. We could, well, we could, I guess we could add one more. Let's go back to uh, insert, reference geometry, mate reference, and then select on the top surface here secondary reference. And in this case, we want this to be, uh, it's going to be st sitting upright. So that would indicate we want, I believe we would want to go with anti line on this. Uh, no, align. Select the line. That will put the solids on both sides. So underneath here, the solid will be screwed into the actual wood. And hit apply. I'm going to try selecting the concentric again on this one. Maybe it didn't take the first time. Delete this one. Okay, now at this point, if you get an error on the boss revolve, I'm not sure what that's coming from, but I'm just going to suppress it. Okay, we could go ahead and save it. And now we could close this. Now let's give it a shot again. Drag the fastening bolt to this edge, this face. And it should be going into place. It didn't work. Let's try this one more time. Zoom up a little closer. And you see we're getting the concentric. Now the tab key pops it in and out. So you can hit the tab key if it's upside down. We do want it to stick out like this. We could go ahead and hit the uh, add finish mate. Now, unfortunately, it didn't take the secondary mate there, but that's all right. We'll go ahead and we'll just apply it. Go to the paper clip and select this face to that face. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to open up the dowel pins now. Just double click on it and let's add a mate to that. And in fact, actually, it already has a mate, so we don't need to add that. Let's close it. And we could go to the dowel and drag it in. 
and there it goes. Okay, now there, what we can do with this one is we can actually go ahead and select the mate tool, select this face to that face, and we'll go by a distance, and we want it to be 0.75. Okay, now we can actually mirror those across. So under linear component, You'll find mirror components. And then we could go ahead and select the mirror plane. In this case, the right plane will work. Actually, we'll select the right plane of the assembly here. And the components to mirror, which will be these two components. If you hit the next button up here, you'll see the preview. Apply. If you get a fasting bolt error, that's just a modeling error inside the part. It's taken from an older version of SolidWorks, which apparently it doesn't care for. But anyhow, we still get it to work. Now we'll go ahead and go back to the mirror components. The mirror plane for this one will be the front plane, and select those four components. And hit apply. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add some additional parts here. I'm going to go and add a leg. We have a leg. This one's going to go on this side. The way I know that is because we can see the holes here actually have countersinks in it, and those are going to be on the outside. So for this, we could go ahead and add some mates between these holes here. So like this face here, could align to the very first dowel cylindrical face, and then the flat face to this face here. Now you'll notice that this will swivel so we just have to have one more mate yeah, between this face here and the dowel. Apply. We're going to go ahead and add more bolts. Now this is just the ordinary bolt here. We could bring in two instances. And then we could go ahead and mate those up. Select this face that face, and this one to that. Fortunately, they're backwards, so I'm going to hit this reverse switch. Apply, drag it up here, and then we just select this face to go flush with that face. On this bolt, because it's backwards, I could always go back to the feature tree. And I could edit that mate under the mate groups here. It's probably the second to the last mate, or third to the last mate. There we go. I'm going to edit the feature and then hit the mate alignment to reverse it. And now I could select this face to go flush to that face. Okay, if you ever get like an error message like this with a particular component, it does slow things down a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what's going on here. Apparently there's a sketch that has an issue, it lost an edge of some sort. So we can just click on that and delete it. Hit rebuild. I'm going to unsuppress that. That seems to have fixed the error. I could go back and all the errors disappear. Okay, now the next thing I want to do here is I want to add the rib that goes in between. So we could go to the Explore here and we'll find the ribs, drag the rib in, 
We only need one, so I'm going to delete that extra one I accidentally put in. Go to Mate, and you can select this edge to mate up to this edge here. Flip the alignment. And rotate this out. And select this edge to mate to this edge here. All right. Now we could actually mirror this over if we wanted to. Uh, first, there's some casters we have to take care of. Or, um, it's under the casters. They're not actual wheeled casters. They're just these. I'll drag this in. Drag one there. And one there. Mate those up. Space to that face. And the rubber face here. Go flush with that face. Do the same over here. Select this face to that face. And actually, you can just select this bottom face to go flush with that, the other caster. Now, rather than move that over there, put a new one in, we can actually use the mirror tool. Select the right plane, which is in the dead center of the model. Go to Mirror Components. And we could just select the components we want to mirror. Now here's where we run into a little bit of an issue. Let's hit Next. Now we can see here that mirroring this brings the holes to the opposite side. So we need a, a separate copy of that particular part. So the leg here, if we click on it, we need to create an opposite hand version. So I'm going to hit that little button there. And you can see now it actually looks correct. Hit Next. And we can name that. It will automatically add a prefix to it. And hit the green check button. If we go to uh, Trimetric, you can see our desk. And at this point, you can go to the Office Products and turn on Photo View 360. The Render tool turns on, and we're able to actually edit the scene or the appearance. I'm going to go ahead and click on Perspective here, give it a little bit more of a vanishing point. We could rotate it around if we wanted to see like the side here. And let's do a um, integrated preview. Or just a preview window actually. It's a little bit faster. The preview window pops up and gives you a good preview of what it looks like. In this case you can see something looks wrong. The floor is too high. So let's adjust that. If you go to edit scene, down below here, we can see the floor offset. And we actually want it to be zero. For some reason, it looked like it was a little too high. Let's the preview window again. That looks better. Okay, now let's apply some materials. I'm going to click on this tabletop, go to the beach ball, and I'm going to delete the polished cherry. And click on it again, and I'm going to go to the entire desktop and edit the color. Under appearances, we can find woods, or it would be under organic. Wood, and then find the wood that you like. Go with polished cherry. The mapping can be adjusted to different scales and sizes. Make it finer. Apply. And the same could 
be added to these sources. Like maybe I want the, the bottom to be black. So I'm going to go to edit leg. And I'm going to go with plastic. And a let's see with a low gloss. Low gloss plastic. Do the same over here. And then finally this one. Let me make that a gray. Or something that color there. Preview window. Okay. And so basically you can dress that desk up considerably better than what I have. But remember there's also all these different types of backgrounds and you can change and adjust that a bit. Now to explode it, you could go to Assembly, Exploded View, so select the desktop and explode that upward, and then select the pins, Those up and select these pins. Bring those out. And bring this as well. And now we can right click and animate collapse. And we can set this to recycle to go back and forth and then record and save the animation. And when you save the animation, you have the ability to not just set it up for the SOLIDWORKS screen. But also, you can use the um, photo, photo view editor, so it will actually make it in the specific colors that you picked out and actually render each individual image. It takes a long time. The uh, SOLIDWORKS screen is a little bit faster, but needless to say, you could do it either way. And then you just hit save. And as far as these different types of uh, codecs, Microsoft Video is probably the most commonly used one nowadays. Some of the others are better, uh, but just set the compression quality up and hit OK. Oops. Experiencing some interesting artifacting in here. I'm going to hit stop. But it should have saved the video. And it probably didn't work very well here, but. And you can see the video. And that concludes exercise 20.